In 2010, Temple Grandin was named one of the 100 most influential people in the world by Time magazine. She has changed how the $70 billion beef industry treats animals. And she has changed the way all of us think about autism. People with autism spectrum disorders have difficulties in three areas. They have difficulties with communication, they have difficulties with socialization, and they have restricted interests. They'll be interested in objects, but not so interested in people. About a third of people with Asperger's syndrome or high-functioning autism will be able to live independently. But for the most part, they tend to stay at home, mostly living with their families. You gotta remember, animal thinks in pictures. An animal thinks in specifics. How is it that Dr. Temple Grandin was able to beat such odds? To overcome a difficult childhood and become an influential teacher, scientist, and author? It's a question some of the leading neurologists in the country would like to answer. I go to Washington, D.C. on the 6th, then I go to Dallas, Tucson on the 11th, class on the 12th, I go to St. Bex, you know, I flew Louis. in on the 8th, did the scan, and then fly back home. Yep, that's my calendar. Temple's calendar is booked solid for a year. Just going crazy. <laughs> it's the story of my life. But she still makes time, periodically, to have her brain scanned for the sake of science. Temple's brain is of special interest because she's not only autistic, but very good at describing what's going on inside her head. One thing I do not do is get to the airport the last minute. That makes me really crazy. All right, gotta go. With ever-advancing technology, scientists hope to find the physical differences between neurotypical brains and those on the autism spectrum. Hi, hi, hi. So nice to, nice to see you. See you. Hi. Nice I've been you. telling everybody that I'm going to journey to the center of my mind, the state-of-the-art scan. You were right. Dr. Temple Grandin is volunteering her unusual mind for a cutting-edge study. Just like airport security. <laughs> Neurologists at the Carnegie Mellon Center for Cognitive Brain Imaging are trying to use MRI machines in new ways, with protocols that allow them to visualize different aspects of actual human brains in action. Let's go. We're asking her to keep track of where an object travels through a three-dimensional array. So this activates a, a network of brain areas, among them one that allows one to keep visual images in, in one's mind. A preference for tangible objects over abstractions is common in people who are autistic. We did a research study on people with autism to examine that. We had two conditions. We asked people to evaluate sentences as true or false. Some of the sentences were not particularly visual, like uh, Brussels is a city in Belgium. And some of them were very visual. Things like the digit eight, when turned on its side, looks like a pair of glasses. So here's the, I, th I think, extremely interesting result. For the visual kinds of sentences, there wasn't any difference between people with autism and controls. But on the abstract sentences, there was a difference. No one knows why autistic brains struggle with abstract concepts. But the researchers here at Carnegie Mellon believe the problem cannot be located in a single brain region. Rather, there is something different in the way the parts of the brain are connected. Okay, Temple, the noise is going to start. You doing all right? I'm okay. Temple gets ready for another round of tests. Okay, great. Here comes the noise. That damn bird chirping. This acquisition is called high-definition fiber tracking. And this is an even more modern, pioneering state-of-the-art method done on almost nobody else. This MRI protocol uses diffusion spectrum imaging, or DSI, to track connections inside the brain. Diffusion imaging is a method which measures uh, 
the movement of water protons, basically. And those protons are restricted in white matter. White matter is made up of axons, the long arms with which brain cells reach out to one another and communicate. Complex pathways of white matter transmit electrical and chemical signals between distinct areas of gray matter, which are responsible for various mental processes. Like other cells in our bodies, neurons contain water. We can measure how fast and in which direction that water moves. And we can establish exactly where these tracks between different gray matter areas are actually traveling. This measures the white matter in extremely high definition. It organizes the magnetic field in 257 different directions and measures the diffusion of water molecules within microtracts in a person's brain. I like to first of all compliment you on not moving in the magnet. Uh, we have a very nice set of images. This is a map of all of the white matter. So this is showing where the ends of the cable are within the brain. In the DSI images, white matter appears in a rainbow of four colors, which represent the direction each fiber is transmitting signals. So this is like the white matter under the gray matter. Correct. Exactly. Sort of showing the convolutions on the underside of the gray matter. Right. Human thoughts occur mostly in the thin layer of wrinkled gray matter, the cortex. This outer covering wraps around the connecting fibers. Some believe that these fibers work less efficiently in autistic brains. The coordination of the activity between the front and the back parts of the brain are lower in autism. And we see this in study after study after study. There's less coordination between different parts of the brain. Carnegie Mellon researchers are working on a new explanation for some characteristics of autism. We call it underconnectivity theory. Underconnectivity between the frontal areas of the brain and the posterior areas of the brain. Dr. Schneider would like to show you some 3D images. Oh, Here's some 3D glasses. Oh, cool. Underconnectivity in the brain could cause day-to-day -day problems for individuals with autism. But it also may finally explain Temple Grandin's unusual capacity for visual thinking. Temple Grandin has been exhibiting autistic behavior since she was a child. And some neurologists believe those symptoms are caused by a weak connection between her occipital lobe and her frontal cortex. But the brains we are born with are not our brains for life. Temple's brain was forced to adapt. Adaptation is in some ways the hallmark of the human brain because the world is always changing and the brain always has to adapt to those changes. And I think it's possible that the brain in autism adapts to this frontal posterior underconnectivity. Our hypothesis is that this disconnection between the frontal lobe and posterior areas has allowed them to develop a stronger coordination of posterior spatial areas, making them somehow better in terms of doing spatial processing than typical individuals who have frontal input. With less connection between visual processing in the back of the brain and areas responsible for abstractions and emotions in the front, autistic individuals may end up with better, purely visual systems. Underconnectivity may also explain why those with autism have trouble with social interactions. The social processing doesn't go quite as well as one would want in autism. That thinking involves the frontal component and posterior components. And to make that social thinking, that social interaction go smoothly, that network has to work well.